Hi grade 12, it's Nomsebo again and I'm going to be continuing the topic we started on companies unique um, transactions and basically in the first videos I told you about the function of the accounting equation, I told you how each transaction affects the equation and I spoke to you about the trail of the um, the trail of every bookkeeping system right so now we're going to try a question where we apply the knowledge that we learned before right so we're going to do question two of our past question paper from last year september so this is basically going to help you a lot for this exam that you're going to write soon right so the question says the following Information was extract, extracted from the accounting records of Ciswe Limited on the 30th of June 2020, the beginning of the accounting period. Okay, this is very important. You need to take note of when the accounting, accounting period starts and when it ends because most adjustments will try to trick you and give you an adjustment that applies to before the accounting period or after the accounting period or payments that need to happen in the accounting period but then end after the accounting period. Do you get what I'm saying? So some things, some adjustments will try to trick you. So knowing your accounting period will help you a hell of a lot. Right. So we are required to analyze each, each transaction according to the headings provided. An example is completed for you. Fine. They gave us an example of an EFT payment for audit fees due and they filled out the accounting. They filled it out according to um, the headings provided. So in our answer sheet, right, um, we have, oh, my bad guys. Here's our answer sheet. So in our answer sheet, we have account debited account credited amount right we're going to focus mostly on the account and if we have time we'll fall into the amount okay so the first transaction right we only have three only three the first transaction says on the 1st of june 2020 the company board of directors authorized the buyback of 45,000 of the company's shares from the existing shareholders a repurchase price of five rand above the average share price on okay a repurchase price repurchase price of five rand above the average share price right and electronic transfer of four hundred and five thousand was made to shareholders for shares repurchased right two entries that's so kind for them to let you know that it's two entries Usually they just want you to guess, right? Two entries doesn't mean the double entry because a credit and a debit only amount to one entry. So two entries means two of that, right? So when we look at it, what shares, what, like I'm giving away some of the unders, but what accounts have been affected? You've been told about shares that are being bought back, right? Um, you've then, so, and we know about the share. So the standard, equation or the standard accounting um, entry for a buyback is to credit bank because when we're buying back shares we are going to pay money so we're going to have an outflow in the bank department and obviously on the and since bank is an asset we discussed that an asset will decrease on the credit side and then Ordinary shares have been affected as well in this entry because we are now going to have more ordinary shares. And we discussed in the other video that our ordinary shares fall under equity and equity increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side, right? So ordinary share capital is decreasing on the debit side because we no longer have that capital now that we've had to buy back our shares, right? So that's the first entry. I'll say ordinary and I'll say is, okay, I'll just say share capital so that you guys have a big, better picture. Capital and then bank, right? 
The second portion of the transaction is then the dealing with the retained income, right? Because obviously that deals with the portion that was stated here that re the repurchase price of five rand above the average share price. So obviously our retained income is going to be affected. And once again, our bank is going to decrease, right? Then adjustment B, right? Adjustment B states, there are two directors at the start of the accounting period. They earn the same director's fees. Director's fee totaling um, 360,000 have been paid for the first half of the accounting period only. On the second of the, okay, on the 1st of January, 2020, a third director was appointed. His remuneration is 10% lower than the other directors provide for the adjustment fees, right? They spoke about director's fees, that is a control account. They spoke about that there is expense that they have paid portion of the year for. So there's expenses that are accrued, right? So I spoke about director's fees. Director's fees um, are going to be debited. And then the increase of, oh, I just wrote debited, my bad. Director's fees, right? And then the accrued expense falls under an equity and because it is being credited, it shows us that it is increasing. So the amount of money that they owe in general is going to increase because of the portion for the second half of the year that has not been paid. So I'm going to say accrued expense. So that balances out the equation. Right. Then let's do C. C says, Bright Sophie, the data who originally owed 32,000, yeah, originally owed 32,000, has been declared insolvent. His estate paid 40, 40 cents in a rand. The balance must be written off as irrecoverable. No entries have been made as yet. All right, and they stated again two entries, which is also still very kind of them. All right, so. Sophie is a debtor and she owed money and now she's been declared insolvent, right? In terms of our bank, the fact that her estate has paid a specific amount is an increase. So bank on the debit side, right? Credit debtors control because obviously we've gotten back money that was owed to us, right? Then the second half of the push of the equation is dealing with the fact that we had originally declared her insolvent. So we had declared, we had classified her as a bad debt, which means that we had credited bad debts. Now we have to debit bad debts to, de to remove that entry, not remove, but basically to cancel out. So bad debt. And then once again, because it affected the debtors control as well, that is what we're going to credit. So as you can see, the answers are in the questions, are in there in your face, right? And this is very easy to fill in. The answer, the, the amounts are also very easy. They are based off of the information that you are given. But what I'm trying to show you is that it's not as complicated as it may seem. You just get an equation, uh, you get a, sorry, a story, Sort of explaining what is going on in the transaction so you get a little adjustment here you read it and if you read it carefully another thing that i feel is best to do and what is very helpful is to say for instance question i mean yeah question a where it says on the 20th on the 1st of june um directors authorize the buyback right the keyword we know from our unique transactions is a buyback right a buyback of shares, the sale of shares, the repurchase, all of that, right? Highlight a buyback of shares. Then highlight shares as well because you know there's a there's a control account that has the word shares in it, right? Then you're also going to see a repurchase price of above the average. So you're going to highlight five friend above. Already, what you highlighted indicates here that we're dealing with ordinary share capital, right? And here, that we're dealing with retained income.
the buyback will show you that you need to use your ordinary shares as an account and the five rand above will show you that retained income is what's being affected and that will help you identify your accounts when you're doing the double entry and just showing what happened in accounting terms versus this paragraph which is quite tedious other than that i really just feel like reading and understanding is the most important thing thank you so much for watching i hope this helped you bye